All right, everybody, good morning, good afternoon. I see Sharon and John uh, jumping in. Hello, I see you waving. Awesome. Uh, cool, looks like everybody's coming in right at, uh, right at the start here. Thank you for being here today, folks. Uh, this is Dave Rosendahl. Um, I think I know all of you, at least uh, by name here. I've got Iram and uh, Jessica behind the scenes hel helping me again today. So say hello to them. Go over to the chat. And uh, today, uh, to try to get more engagement here in the chat, um, they should be able to see your comments as well. So let's just make sure that that's true. Go over there and say hello to them. Uh, Iram and Jessica are here with me. So I want to make sure you can uh, talk with them. Go over there and drop a hello in the chat. I want to make sure for uh, Sherry and Sharon. Leon, hey, Leon, it's good to see you. Cassie, seeing a bunch of names I recognize here from a lot of the communication we've been doing. John, a couple Johns, uh, Emerson, David, and David Buck. Hey, my man. Uh, Brian, hey, Brian, it's good to see you. If you could go over there, folks, and just drop a chat message. I want to make sure you, uh, you can actually converse with us. So please go over to find the chat, and uh, let's, let's have a little conversation. So right now, I see it at 1230 here Pacific time. Uh, okay, great. Cassie is saying she can hear us. Awesome. So um, Iram and Jess, can you confirm that you can see Cassie's note? Just make sure you can see that. I want to make sure that you're seeing those, uh, those notes there. Just chat with me if you can. Just chat it in there. Um, oh, I'm saying currently can't see Cassie's note. Interesting. Um, oh, Cassie, did you send it to me privately? Um, send it to uh, all panelists if you have that option. Um, just want to make sure. And we might end up between this session and next session, we might end up changing this so that uh, we use the Zoom webinar instead of Zoom meeting. Um, Sharon is saying, can I, I can only post to you, David, and IRM. Is that okay? If that's okay. Jessica is saying I can't see it. Um, Cassie is saying all is not an option. All right. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, let's see. We'll wait another few minutes. Go ahead and keep chatting with me then, folks. Whoever you can talk to is fine. I can see it over here. Um, Iram and Jessica, see what you can do. If there's any way that you can uh, engage folks, that would be awesome. I'm going to wait another few minutes here just to make sure everybody gets in the room. I see Michael that just came in. Hey, Elsa, it's good to see you. Hi, Cammie. Uh, Sherry, hey, don't think I said hello to you yet. Um, I'll wait another minute, like I said, uh, just to make sure that everybody can get in here. I'm going to go into chat and say hello. There we go. I'm really excited, folks, to be able to uh, share this with you today. Today's a, a exciting uh, set of topics, or one topic in specific that we're peeling apart with a, with a couple of um, very, very interesting layers to it. So I'm really, really pumped to be here with you today. All right. I see us at 23. I think we're, uh, what is class attendance? Uh, Jess or Iram, can you put that in the uh, chat for me? Help me remember what this is. I think we're around 49 for this group. Is that right? So maybe I'll wait another second or two um, just to make sure the rest of everyone, all, all the others come in. Okay. Looks like uh, everyone is getting settled. That's fantastic. 45, Jessica, you think? Okay. No problem. 45 it is. We'll wait another second, um, but I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So if you just jumped in, you haven't missed anything yet, this is Dave Rosendahl. Thank you for being uh, uh, early and on time to today's session. This is session number two, how to find and create engaging content. And we'll officially get started here. I want you to make uh, use of Iram and Jessica who are in the chat. I don't know if you can directly um, send them messages, but either way, go say hello in the chat. We, we often, uh, throughout these sessions, we'll be engaging you in chat. I'll be asking you questions. And then afterwards, um, Jessica and Iram go through all of the questions. And if there's any actions that we take or any questions that you have, we follow up with you based on what's in the chat. So make sure to use that. Um, we want to make sure that we stay attentive to everything that you need. And if you have something that's on your mind, a question, a need, whatever it is, drop it in the chat because we go back and parse it. So uh, I'm looking at around 25 people. If we could let Paul in, uh, Jess or Iram, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, today is week two. And like I said a second ago, this is all about how to find and create engaging content. And so if you recall at last week's class, I think all of you were here last week. Let me see what the team is saying here to me. Um, doesn't look like they're saying anything. All right. If you were here at last week's class, I told you that we're kind of breaking this apart um, from a high level using the roadmap that you see here on the screen, okay? So step one, what we're trying to do 
is get you up and running with the software and get you to launch your first campaign. A lot of you have already done that, which is fantastic. Okay, that's kind of step one in this whole process. Step two is what you're in today, which is these, this opti-channel training uh, series uh, that's going to train you on how to think in the opti-channel manner that's imperative, we argue, for today's marketing and sales success and help you do even more from a campaign management perspective by launching uh, some of these pre-built, ready-to-run campaigns that you have um, in the package, in the service that you signed up with MindFire. Okay, so that's kind of step two is get the training and do more campaigns so you can start to amplify your lead flow. And then thirdly, for some of you, some of you are going to start to sell these opti-channel services. What you're learning to do today, what you're learning to do in this course, you're going to start offering it to your customers. You're going to start selling them this as a solution. This is particularly uh, germane to like the agencies that are here with us today, the service providers, the printers, commercial printers, folks like you who sell services to your customers. And specifically, we have the curbside ordering solution, which is something that's very much in demand right now for restaurants. And we have the virtual event quick start, which is also very much in demand. This helps um, organizations run virtual events to replace the face-to-face -face communication that is difficult in many areas. So those two uh, quick starts are kind of the third piece here that we want to help get you oriented to and get you up and running with. So I think from my notes, uh, we've got, uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of you, Boyd's, uh, Mouse, Graphics, O'Brien, uh, GPA, if the GPA folks are here, uh, Unic, UNIC, I think you've expressed interest in uh, taking steps forward with this third component here. But if there are others of you here who have restaurants as clients or organizations that desperately need help running virtual events, remember, you have access to what we call these quick start templates that give you a running start to be able to offer some very powerful services to anybody who needs to take orders online. But in particular, we're talking about restaurants and retail locations, right? If you have customers like that, you have capacity in your hands now to be able to offer them that, okay? So if you're interested, go to the chat and drop the word curbside, if that's something that would be helpful to you, or drop the, the phrase virtual event, okay? So curbside meaning you wanna learn more about how to use this e-commerce portion of the software. Virtual event, if you, want, if you have clients in that arena who you think you wanna run virtual events for, okay? Go over to the chat, Again, we'll go back and parse this through. If you have clients in that area, we want to know, drop that into the chat now, and we'll go back and follow up with you on that. All right, awesome, cool. Anne-Marie, it's good to see you. Curbside and virtual, perfect. Okay, keep dropping it in there, folks. Um, let us know, and we will follow up diligent, diligently with you and help you um, in your journey there. All right, so quick recap now of our first session, all right? If you recall, we looked at this three-piece framework. If you're taking notes, I, I still use paper, believe it or not, even though being the digital guy over here. If you're taking notes, you probably drew out this, uh, this triangle here comprised of this idea that in order for you to effectively market your organization, you need to create a movement. And that movement is comprised of, number one, an expert or a guide who presents a new opportunity um, and a future-based cause to his or her audience, his or her tribe, okay? And that those three things, once you've identified those three, that's how you start your marketing. That's how you approach what we're doing here as marketers. We talked about how you see this pattern everywhere, right? I, I told you the story about going to the, the Salesforce conference, Dreamforce, seeing Mark Benioff, um, where I kind of started to realize that this pattern was present. We talked about how you see it with Apple. You see it with Tesla. You even see it in religions, right? Um, there's always kind of this expert or charismatic leader that's kind of the face of the organization. And I argue to you that you need to consider how you can do that within your organization to be able to create a movement, a marketing movement that's going to um, bring folks along with you in this journey. The other thing we talked about is that every successful brand, including yours, needs to position the products and services you offer in a way that um, puts it into a new opportunity, a new category, if you will. And we talked about how Steve Jobs has done this well uh, or did this well over the years, um, how he created this new category of digital music player, right? All of your music in your pocket, not just a few more songs on your Walkman, if you remember Walkmans, or um, you know, a few more songs in your pocket, but all of your music digitally stored. We talked about 
Elon Musk and how he's created a new category. And the point that I wanted to make last week, which many of you took to heart, was that as you think about how you're doing this for your organization, it's not enough just to improve um, something that already exists. You need to position this as something entirely new. You need to create your new category as something completely new. And that's how you position it, okay? And that for many of you, you're going to be thinking about this from a sub-niche or a sub-sub-niche perspective. Like we talked about how within the print market, there's a sub-niche for direct mail, and then you need to come up with perhaps one if you're doing direct mail. You need to come up with a sub-niche inside of direct mail to position yourself in, right? And so with the expert, with the guide, presenting the new opportunity to your market, united with now this third piece, which is the future-based cause, your movement begins to move forward. Your marketing begins to pick up steam. I got some questions about future-based cause, so I want to just talk about that for a moment here. What is a future-based cause? Be a little bit more specific, Dave, when, you, when you're talking about this, okay? The future-based cause, the concept here, this third piece, is that you need to show your audience what they can accomplish, what they might be able to accomplish with your product, with your service, that in many cases, they may find or they may think is impossible right now. In their minds, them achieving that, their organization achieving that, might seem impossible. You need to show them how others like them are doing it. Give them a future that shows them that something like that is possible for them or their organization. It's something that they can strive for. And what we suggest you do is you, you instill within them this desire to join the ranks of those who have actually achieved that something, whatever that is. And so the illustration we used last time is Roger Bannister, if you remember, where, um, you know, the, the, the reason why I put this on here is because many of your customers, many of your prospects have a false belief that they can't do something, that they won't be able to do the thing that you're, that you're promising them or the outcome that you deliver. Because a lot of us um, live under this, well, I can't do it because I've never seen it done before. Or it seems out of reach for me. It's impossible. Therefore, whatever Sherry is, is selling me or whatever Elsa is selling me or John, we got a lot of Johns here. Cassie, it just, I don't think that it's, I, I can't do it. I don't see how it's possible for me. The reason why we use Roger Bannister is because when he broke that false belief and showed people what was possible, despite it never having been done for what, probably millions of years, once he showed people what was possible, within 45 days, somebody else did it again, okay? And so that's why we talk about when you create a future-based cause, you need to show people what's possible by elevating your customers case studies, creating like what Mark Benioff at Salesforce has done, this, this trailblazer category that elevates your customers to a position of, of herohood, if I could use that word, right? To show people what's possible. So that's the framework we covered in the first class. Expert or guide, you need to identify somebody in your organization or, or that may need to be you. Second, you need to position what you do, what you offer as a new opportunity and you need to lead your movement to this better future by creating this future-based cause. Go over to the chat, one, two, or three. I wanna know which one of those do you think you're gonna have the biggest challenge with? Which one are you facing the biggest challenge with right now? Is it identifying the expert, the attractive character, this charismatic leader? Is it this new opportunity sub-niche creation? That's number two. Or three, creating this future-based cause. Go over to the chat, drop it in. I want to know right now, which one of these do you think you're going to have the most, the most uh, challenging time with because we want to help you with that, all right? Let's see that come in and we'll follow up and help you with that. So what I want to talk about now is once you have that framework in mind, how do you actually start to use your marketing and your content and the investment that you've made in MindFire to engage your customers in a way that's going to pull all these pieces together and generate more leads and sales, okay? And so specifically, the way I'm gonna do that is through what we call the OptiChannel content model. I'm gonna walk you through the framework and then we're gonna get into the tactics. I'm actually gonna show you how to do this stuff, all right? But let me kind of tell you how I teach this material. If you're a logical you know, thinker, if you will, if you like to know kind of what the steps are that's involved in how we're doing this, I'm just gonna give you the the mental framework. So if you're taking notes, you kind of know where we are in the training as we go through this. Okay. And I use this pattern everywhere whenever I teach. The first thing is I always try to talk about the mindset. Okay. The mindset is very important. It's usually switching 
or breaking false beliefs in the minds of the people that we're teaching or that we're communicating with that's important to start with. So I always start with kind of a mind shift um, explanation. Then I usually move to the strategy portion of the material. And usually I show that to you in a framework. It's a picture, usually like the, the, um, the triangle that we have, right? That's the framework. And then lastly, I show you the tactics. How do you actually do that specific thing? How do you, where do you click? Where, wh how do you do the specific things that are going to roll up into the strategy that support this mindset, okay? So I'm telling you that because today, I'm gonna go inside of DaVinci, which all of you should have access to by now and have uh, probably used here and there already and show you how to do some of these things from within DaVinci. But don't worry if, if while I'm showing you that, you're thinking, shoot, what button did you click? Or where should I click to do this? That's not the point of, of today's session. Certainly, if you have a question and need help in that area, uh, IRAM and his team, the, the support staff that we have can help you with any of that. What I want you to take away from today is just jot down the ideas that are coming to you as you do this, as you watch me do this and understand what's possible so that you have kind of a picture in your mind of where you're trying to go, okay? And so I always start with the mindset, then I give you the strategy, which is usually a picture, a framework picture, and then we go into the tactics. You're gonna see that pattern today, okay? So hopefully that's helpful for you. The reason um, I, I find that useful to explain to people so they kind of know how I'm leading them through the material. So for today's session, the mindset here that you need to have to understand how to create and find engaging content that you can use to engage your audience. You probably all remember um, my story about Homeless Dave. Many of you were in the, uh, the webinar where I shared this story. This is how I first kind of learned how impactful um, this strategy is, where remember, I met this guy, Dave, you can see him right here um, at a, in a Target parking lot, actually, and we became friends. Um, he told me his story and shared with me a lot about his life and kind of how he arrived on the streets. And what I did is just uh, found myself like incredibly moved by this, this guy's story. He was a few years older than me, um, but I could easily see how like his life and my life were just razor thin in terms of the separation between us two. And that really, that really, that really impacted me. It was a very emotional experience. So I went home, you've all probably heard this story, but I went home and started writing about it. And I did that in the form of a blog. And what I found is, is that as I was publishing this content that was kind of a catharsis for me in general, it was also though very value laden for the reader, meaning people were getting something out of it. And the other thing that was happening is people were asking me about our company, about Mindfire, which I never expected to happen. So I put this content out, I did videos, I, I wrote blog posts, all sorts of um, stories about my time with this guy, my friend Dave. And what started to happen is people would ask me about Mindfire and people would also send money. This was both through PayPal as well as they would walk up to me in public places and hand me envelopes full of cash. That doesn't happen to me every day. And so what I started to realize was, hey, we're, we're doing something here. I'm doing something that's actually touching people. And this is the mindset behind the model, okay? This is the framework here. That as marketers, as business leaders, what you need to do is you need to decide how do you want to communicate? What's the modality of communication that you want to use? Is it words, video, or audio? In the case of my friend Dave, um, I did words, so I did blog posts, I did videos. Um, audio would be something like a podcast, right? And you need to write that from the perspective of the reader, the listener, the viewer, by providing them value. And then you need to mul multiple times a day broadcast across channels where people's attention is high, the cost is low, and your tribe is hanging out. The people that you want to engage are there. And then you need to learn how to siphon that to create leads. So that's at the high level, the model, right? You, you've seen this before. Why is the value part, this part right here, so important? And why do so many people stumble with it? It might seem to you to be obvious, but if you're wondering why that piece is so important, let me illustrate it this way. The way I think you can think about this is as you're doing your marketing, ultimately you wanna generate sales, generate revenue, right? But as you're doing your marketing, you need to put numerous deposits into the bank account of trust with your prospects, with your clients. What I mean by that is 
You need to provide value, 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 value. See all of those things that you're putting out, all of the content that you're putting out is making a small deposit or a large deposit in the bank account that you have with that prospect or with that customer, okay? If you don't do that, what happens is you try to make a sale, you try to engage them for a sale, and you get an insufficient funds for your transaction, right? There's not enough in the bank account for you to be able to withdraw that sale. That's why it's imperative that you pump out this value through content. When you do this right, IRAM, I hope you don't mind, I went into your bank account and I pulled your bank balance, right? So IRAM's got a million, uh, 2,000 here. He's a good guy to know. This is what happens when you're constantly putting out value. You have an account, a balance, if you will, with your clients, with your prospects that allows you now to extract that and turn that into a sale. How many of you um, found value in that illustration? How, do you think about things that way? Go over and give me some thoughts here in the chat. I want to see what you think about that. In terms of you're putting your content marketing out, what you need to think of it as doing, if you, when you look at this model here, right back here, is this needs to provide substantial value to the reader. And it may not be necessarily, it doesn't have to be a huge ebook or a big blog post. It can be little small things that give reader uh, or viewer or listener the value that they find important. Yeah, so John is saying, I use that analogy for relationships in general. You have to give to receive. Sherry is saying, that was cool. Thank you. Anne Marie is saying, yes, I love that analogy. Sherry is saying, isn't that all I do? Sherry, I would agree. So folks, if you don't know Sherry, um, she's in the private members LinkedIn group. She absolutely embodies this. So yes, I agree with you. That is, that is definitely what you do. So make sure you are looking at the world in this way. And what happens when you start to do this is that leads, like the ones you see here on the screen, start to come in. So let me break this apart for you and actually show you tactically how we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to go a level deeper. And I'm going to show you from the perspective of this framework, how to make this happen. So if you're taking notes, you can you can follow along with me by drawing this, but don't worry, um, IRM uh, or Jess will send this deck out to you, you'll have all of these illustrations. Okay. Um, Eileen is saying yes, we discussed what value looks like in a brainstorm session today. Wonderful. Well, Eileen, hopefully, for you and the others this sparks something um, that gives you an opportunity to uh, take that to the next level. So if you want to draw along with me here, let me show you the how to this is now where we're going to get tactical. Okay, with that mindset in, in mind, and the strategy or the framework, which is right here in mind, let me show you how this comes together. So the cornerstone of what we're talking about today is providing content that's engaging or valuable to the reader, the viewer, the listener, right? So imagine for a moment, just for this illustration here that we're talking about a blog post, okay? I'm gonna show you how to find content or create content that's of value to the other person, to your target market. And in that content, in the case of this, I'm talking about a blog post, I'm gonna show you how as somebody reads that content, as they're scrolling down the page and they get to the bottom or somewhere in that page, there's what we call a cont uh, call to action which links them to something else, okay? Let me show you that here in just a minute. To this content now, you need to send people, right? You need to send people to that content. And we're gonna show you how with OptiChannel, you can do that through email and you can do that through social. Social is a big part of this, okay? You're gonna be engaging your audience through a variety of channels to drive them to this content. Now, the key is this little yellow box here, if you look at the screen, when somebody from an email or from social or any of these other channels gets to the content and is reading it, you want to embed this call to action here, which is something essentially that says, hey, if you like this article, you're going to love this other thing, okay? And I'm simplifying it, but that's the idea. The basic idea is you're taking them, it's thematically related to whatever the content is. Let's say it's an ebook, okay? So they click on this and they come to a page where they can fill in a form to then get the ebook, let's say on the thank you page. And then from that point forward, you can now drip on them. So if you're doing this from the perspective of social, as you're putting out posts onto LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, some number of people are going to go over there and read the content. Some percentage of those are going to click on this call to action button and go through this process here now where you've been able to extract value from them by getting their email address. And you're able to give them this value, which is the PDF here. Am I making sense so far? Let me know if you have any questions. From the perspective of the technology that you have inside of MindFire, this process here is what we call a drive traffic campaign objective. So if you've already logged into DaVinci, you've probably seen that word. Don't worry if you haven't. 
from the perspective of DaVinci, this is a capture lead campaign objective, okay? I'm just kind of illustrating that for you so you kind of orient yourself to how you do this in DaVinci. And I'm gonna go a level deeper here in a minute and show you how to do it. So here's the tactical set of steps that we're gonna walk through. There's three key steps. This is how you do what I just showed you a second ago. Step number one, find content that's likely engaging for your audience. Then in step two, create an opti-channel campaign to drive traffic to that content. And then thirdly, create a way, a mechanism to siphon leads from that content. So whether it's through LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram, Facebook or email, as you're driving people to that content, I'm gonna show you how to extract names, email addresses, people from that content to turn them into leads, okay? And when you do that, that's this process here. That's what I'm articulating here in this workflow. All right, everyone getting this? Let me know if you have any questions. Go over to the chat, drop a question. If anything I've said is unclear. All right, we're gonna go through step number one now. This is how you find content that's likely engaging for your audience. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you how to do that through the uh, context of the MindFire software that you have, okay? Um, there are some advanced strategies and um, techniques that I will show you in subsequent, subsequent classes. But today, I'm going to show you specifically how you do this through MindFire, all right? Are there any questions, though, before I move to there? Doesn't look like it. All right. So now watch carefully what I'm going to show you here. If you look at the screen here, men and women, I'm going to log in to DaVinci here. Again, all of you should have access. If you don't, please let uh, me or my team know, and we'll, we'll get you logged in. This is what it looks like when you log in. I'm sure you've all seen this. I'm going to go over here to My Markets. You see this over here on the left-hand side? Click that, and this is where you can tell the system, where you can tell our software to find you companies, people, and content that you can use to generate more leads to accelerate your lead gen in your sales pipeline, okay? So here's how it works. You create a target market, and target market is basically just a, a bucket or a collection of people and content um, and companies that are in a particular market. Let's call this one direct mail. Um, direct mail targets. Let's say these are people who might be interested in direct mail. You put in that keyword, and now what the system's going to do is search for content to fill that target market, and it emails you when it's ready, okay? So what we did there is we did this first step. We've told the MindFire software to find us content about direct mail so that we can find some examples of this. Other stuff that's already out there that we can use to create leads for us. Now, some of you are gonna say, hmm, why don't I create my own content? Absolutely, you definitely can. But use this piece of the technology, use this capability to find out what's already working. Go and see what headlines work, what other content's um, popular. I'm gonna show you that in a second, how you can read those signals to inform your decision around what content you should actually create. Right? This will give you some help in, in ascertaining that. I see John is saying, uh, my screen doesn't have my markets. Okay, so John, uh, we will make a note of that. Uh, Jess or IRM will help you with that. Um, Sherry is saying, how do we find content that isn't from crazy ad-heavy sites? We have been struggling with the articles. Okay, Sherry, there's multiple um, strategies that we can help you with there. Um, so you, folks, keep those questions coming. I wanna make sure we, we answer those. So we've told MindFire what to do. And now what I wanna show you is, um, what to do once you find a piece of content. Uh, let's say we are going to use one of those other pieces of content. You certainly could create your own. There's no reason you shouldn't. But let's try to get there faster by using another piece of content. I want to show you how to add this call to action overlay on top of it. Okay? So the way you do that, again, back within uh, MindFire DaVinci, I'm going to refresh the page here. And now we see that it found 30 articles, all right? So I'm gonna click on, you see where it says here, the 30 articles. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this target market. And now what you see are a listing of um, articles that uh, are germane to that keyword. Direct mail in this case is what I used, all right? So I'm scrolling here. You can see there's quite a number of articles from like the past uh, week, week and a half. I think I picked 15 days initially here. So you'll find a bunch for whatever it is you're looking for. And what I typically do is come over here to the engagements. And what we're doing is we're pulling in the, the, the social signals. Like this one has um, 162 Facebook engagements. 
Um, we're giving you indications as to how this content is resonating in the different platforms, okay? And this is useful for you to look at whether you're creating your own content or you're going to leverage one of these um, other pieces of content. So look at those social signals. Here's one. This one kind of looks interesting, this cutting through the online fatigue, the rise of direct mail during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and use this one. So if I click on this, this is a blog post it looks like here. Um, and again, this is just a simple example. I'm sure there are others and there are probably other uh, better pieces of content. But for the sake of what we're doing here, here's the blog post. Looks interesting. Um, and we can decide to go ahead and use this piece of content um, as the one that we want to drive traffic to, okay? The one that we want to try to leverage in this Opti-Channel campaign. So let's go ahead and uh, let's use this one for this example here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to see where it says add CTA. That stands for call to action. I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to try to do is now superimpose that banner at the bottom to bring people to us, to me to you, okay? So I've got one that I've already created here called the future of direct mail. I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, if you look at the screen, it's just this down here. See where it says the future of direct mail and it's dynamic. This is a report. This is a, an ebook that we have. Um, I've just created this one in advance just to make it easy to show you how this works. But you can go in and create your own uh, call to action overlays. You have the ability to control the way it looks, the color, um, the message color, button, background color, all the things that you want to do to control what that overlay looks like. I'm going to pick it here. And now let's, um, let's preview it. Let me show you what it looks like. So you click on the preview. And here is the content. This should look familiar. And now see at the bottom, we have this red. And this, I just did this quickly. So you could style it however you want with this download study button that when I click on it, is going to bring up a landing page where that reader can now find out more about this particular ebook and then come over here on the right and uh, fill in their information to obtain this particular ebook. Does that make sense so far? So I'm going to go ahead and launch this. Okay, so I click the launch button. I just looked at the preview. Now I want to say, yes, this, this looks good. Let's go ahead and launch. And some magic now starts to happen, okay? We're going to tell the software to name this. I'm going to call it direct mail targets. Um, I'm going to leave these other options. I'm not going to touch these other options here for right now. Don't, um, don't worry about those. We'll talk about those uh, later. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And this will tell DaVinci that I, I want to create a campaign, an opti-channel campaign. Let me know when it's ready. DaVinci says I'll email you when it's ready, okay? So what we've done is we've found a piece of content here. I superimposed the call to action right down here. And now what we have is a unique URL that leads to that piece of content with the call to action superimposed on the bottom, okay? So I can start sharing this now through a variety of channels, social as an example, create engagement through social, and then start to bring people to this content and siphon them into leads. I'm going to pause for a moment. Questions, comments on what you just saw. Go over the chat. I don't want to go too quickly. I want to make sure you are absorbing the tactics that I'm training you on here. Once you have this unique URL for this piece of content here, the one that we're using in this example is that, that blog about uh, direct mail and COVID's impact on it. Now you can start to share that, okay? Let me show you an example. We're going to do more of this in uh, week three, which is next week. I'm going to show you more about how to do this on social, all right? But what you can do is you can take that URL and start to put it in different places, like LinkedIn as an example, to drive leads and sales. So let me show you how you would do that, okay? Now, we'll talk more about this next week, but in case you're wondering, if we come down here back to that article, we see it right here, we can take, let's open it up. Here's the, um, here's the page. I'm going to copy this URL. And I'm going to go over to LinkedIn, and let's create a quick post. I'm not actually going to post this, uh, but I just want to show you. I'm going to create a post. I'll train you on how to do this in an upcoming session, so don't use this copy. But let's just say this is amazing. Uh, put the link in. You can see how it pulls in the, the image here. And if I click post, then it's going to make this available uh, in LinkedIn for people to look at in their feed. 
And when they click on that piece of content from here, from social, it's going to bring them over here to that blog post and begin the siphoning process, right? Does that make sense? Let me pause and see um, what questions are coming in here. So Eileen is saying, what if you don't have an ebook or PDF with valuable information? Eileen, um, forgive me. My team probably knows this better than I do, and I should know this, but I believe you have access to the five pre-built, ready-to-run campaigns that have all of the eBooks and case studies already ready to go. Um, so if you don't have any, that's one of the reasons why we provide that to you is to give you a kickstart there, okay? So if you're asking where do we find those, um, Iram or Jess, if you can make sure to follow up with Eileen on that so she knows, and I'm gonna show you that in subsequent sessions, Eileen, but you have access to um, a series of those already. Um, Dave, uh, is asking, will we be discussing the metrics around what makes a good piece of content good to pick? As I reviewed the system, this is what I felt unprepared to do. Yes, we can take a look at that. Uh, Anne is saying, Anne Marie is saying, yes, it makes sense. Are you able to track the clicks on the URL? Yes, there is reporting on that, Anne Marie, absolutely. Eileen is saying, I think you're right about that. I'll double check. No problem, Eileen, that's what I'm here for. I wanna make sure you, you know where to go and who to go to. Okay, keep those questions coming in here, folks. So now step number two, I want to show you, we've given DaVinci some time behind the scenes to actually take this content and create a, a series of uh, campaign or a campaign series of touches, OptiChannel touches that are going to drive traffic to that content. And then it's also going to give us automatically, it's created a landing page to be able to then siphon that information that folks are giving us about themselves. So let me show you what I mean by that. Back here in uh, DaVinci, when you load the uh, My Market section, you're going to now move over to this uh, My Campaigns over here on the left, okay? And what has happened in the last minute or so as we've been talking, okay, got it, thank you, <laughs> is that uh, DaVinci has created, um, if you look, where is it? You're right, you're right here, these two campaigns, both of them name direct mail targets. One is the email, one's the landing page, okay? This is the name we gave it a second ago. Here's the capture lead. Here's the drive traffic. I'm going to click on the drive traffic. This is the aspect of DaVinci that's going to be pushing traffic, opti-channel communication to that piece of content, okay? So you'll notice that it's already configured for us. The destination of where we want to be sending people is that piece of content that we found a second ago. Let me, let me copy this here, and I'm going to go up here and then paste it in and just show you so you have a visual reference, okay? So it's what we've been talking about. It's that piece of content. And so basically what we're telling DaVinci here is that's where I want to send the traffic. And now look, it's already created an email for us. It's given us a suggestion subject line. Um, it's pulled in the image. It's got some content here. Of course, you should go in and modify it. It's, uh, you know, something that you need to finish up. Like, let's see, what does it say? Exhibition displays and its views on direct mail post COVID is inspiring colon. Then we can change the text on the button. And again, if you need help knowing how to do this, that's what our team is here for. Uh, let's do a salutation here. I want to ask a question. I often do that in our emails. What do you think? I'd love to hear from you. And then I put their first name variable in there and then sign my name. Okay, so this is a simple example of the email that DaVinci started for us. I'm going to finish it up. Looks like I've got some uh, typos here. Uh, go ahead and fix that. And, oh, that's the guy's name, so we'll leave that as it is. Okay, so I've got the email, and uh, we'll leave everything else as it is. This is the email that I can now send my audience to drive them to that traffic. And as they engage with it, I want to make sure I know what's happening so that my sales team, my SDRs, can start to follow up here. So when people visit this content, I want to get a notification. So you turn that on. And now what we do is we start to get email leads of people who are visiting that content, okay? So it's very important as you're running these opti-channel campaigns, turning that engagement into leads that you do that. And this is the last place here where you're going to set the audience. You click save. This is who you want to be sending it to. I'm not going to go into uploading your list and doing all of that right now, but just know that that spot there is where you're telling the, the system, who do I want to be sending this to? Who should I be initially sending this email out to? Okay, so what we did is we looked at the emails that are pushing content to this blog post. Next week, we're going to be going deeper into social, how you can use social to push people to this content. And now in step three, 
We want to extract leads from people who actually click over to download the ebook. Okay, I want to show you how to do that. I'm going to take a moment here. Um, let me know what questions you have. I'm reading through here. Uh, David is saying, we can talk to vendors about content they have to support their markets and might be willing to share with us. Absolutely. In fact, David, um, we do the same uh, for the print community, for the agencies and other B2B verticals. We will partner with organizations who have a vested interest in getting that customer base to generate more leads. And we will create content that we then make available to our customers so they have a running start. So maybe that's um, helpful to you. Uh, John is saying, why do you call it an ebook? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I guess I could call it any number of things. Let me know if you have a suggestion. Um, where do we use an article that we, that we find that we want to share? Right in a new campaign. So Sharon, yeah, what I just showed you is how DaVinci automatically created the campaign for you. That's what I just went through is how DaVinci creates that campaign to send email or social traffic to that campaign. So we'll send out the recording. You can rewatch that portion if you want. But what I want to show you now is, Sharon, once you're sending traffic to that piece of content, how they can click a button, the viewer can click a button and now download, for example, the ebook, the white paper, the PDF, et cetera, to turn that person into a lead. Uh, lots of questions coming in. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I'll, I'll come back to those questions. I want to make sure we stay on track here. So now let me show you how to use the power of the system to create the landing pages here, okay? So back into DaVinci, I'm gonna go back to, uh, let's see, we, we, we've got this uh, campaign content, Sharon, just for your, if you can look, oh, I can't grab it here. This is the content that we're promoting, okay? Uh, Sharon or others who are wondering, again, how, how, how are we doing this? We're driving everybody to this piece of content here, okay? And at the bottom, we have that call to action overlay where can, they can download the study download the ebook. I'm using those, those words interchangeably right now. I hope that doesn't confuse anybody. When I click that, the system has created this landing page for me, what you see right here. It's got a headline, it's got the image, it's got some content here, it's got a form over here on the right-hand side. All of that has been um, magically created for you. Okay, let me show you what that looks like in here. Uh, my campaigns, there we go. And... I will go to the capture lead. That's right here. This is where DaVinci has created that landing page for me. And when people visit this landing page, like the, I just showed you a second ago, they're going to get an ebook or a white paper at the end of it, okay? So the first step here is to tell the system where that payoff is. Where is that PDF? I just have this simple example here. Let me show you this one real quick. This is a PDF. 10 steps to create a successful direct mail campaign. Okay, so just imagine that this PDF was the thing that they would get once they've submitted their information. So I'm gonna save that, put that there. And now the landing page, the system has kind of given me a running start here. I can change the headline here on the page, download, whoops, download the study now. Can't type today. So I can change everything. Um, I can fix this text up here. Um, basically hover over any area, put more great content there when I'm ready. You get the idea. And then the thank you page is the second page that folks arrive at after they submit their information. And let's put the call to action button back on the page here. So I click change the template. This is where they will now click to get that PDF I showed you a second ago. Okay. So I save this. And basically now this, uh, oh, let's fix these again here. Uh, this is now ready to go. So if I go over to, I'm going to open this in a new window. You see this, this link right here, just to see how things are looking. Here's our landing page. All right, close that. Here's our landing page. So I can fill out the form, put my information in there. Let's click download now. I should see that thank you page. Yep. I can click this button to get, the, uh, get that PDF I showed you a second ago. Here it is. And so just like that, you've created an interactive experience for the folks who are interested in getting more information, this is how you can start to engage with them. Now, the other thing that happens is when I submit that form, I can start to receive emails from this campaign. So let's say I wanna change the first email that comes to me and say, it's an email about 
hey, thank you for downloading the content, okay? Um, I saw that you recently downloaded our ebook. Um, we could put something else here. This is kind of like an autoresponder nurture sequence that kicks off once somebody starts to download. I can add more emails if I want. For right now, I'm just going to leave it at the one. And then I want to show you here that every time somebody submits, every time someone becomes a lead, you got to get notified. Okay, so I'm going to set that to my email address just for this example. And that's basically it. Okay, let me go back one slide and just show you again what we did. First, we created this content. We found this content. Second, we configured the campaign that's going to be driving content to that piece of that blog post in this example. Now, when people click that red overlay at the bottom, we're driving them to this capture lead campaign that allows them to download that particular item. Am I making sense? Uh, Anne Marie is saying, are you recording this session and will you be sharing it? Yes. So Anne Marie, at the end um, of today or sometime in the next few hours, Iram or Jessica will be following up with this. I may need, leave, may need to leave early. Boo, don't leave us. I don't want to miss it. No worries. We'll send it to you. Um, Eileen is saying, yes, it makes so much sense. Excited to dig in. Okay, cool. What else are you thinking, everyone? I went through the mindset. I went through the, the strategy. I showed you the framework, and I went into the tactics, okay? And again, the purpose of this isn't for you to remember, where do I click? Where do I do all of these things? The purpose for you is to understand, to have a mental image, even if it's a little fuzzy right now, that's okay, a mental image of, okay, now I kind of understand what I can do in the system to achieve these outcomes. And if you have a specific question about where do I click and where do I do this, where do I do that, IRAM, wonderful support team um, that he heads up, that's where we can answer all of those questions for you, okay? So don't worry if you forget where to click. We can help you with that. Um, David is saying, your support team is great. Special thanks to IRAM and Robert. Yes, we work hard, 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 David, to do that, but it's always great to hear that. Um, lean on us, folks, if you need help there. So recapping what we did, okay? We found content that's likely engaging for our audience by creating this target market. We called it direct mail targets. Remember that? It could be for any industry, B2B, B2C, put in keywords, let the system surface interesting content, okay? What do you do with that content? You have two options. One is you let it inspire or inform content that you want to create, content that you want to model, because the system is telling you it's working. Here are the engagements it's seeing across different platforms. That's one thing. The other thing you can do is use that content directly by superimposing that call to action, okay? So you have two options. When you pick the article and you want to superimpose the call to action overlay, that's what we did a second ago. That's what puts that red uh, call to action at the bottom. And now you have a piece of content that you can copy the link. Uh, actually, it's right over here. See where it says share. You can copy that link and start to distribute it. Next week, I'm gonna show you how to do that effectively in LinkedIn and other social networks, all right? Today, I showed you how to do that through email. Now, once you've done that, behind the scenes, MindFire is doing its magic. It's going to create you the drive traffic piece of this puzzle here, which is what's pushing content, uh, pushing traffic to that content. And it's gonna create the capture lead component, which is that landing page where people can go and provide their information that turns them into a lead for you and gives them that payoff, whatever it is, okay? Now, the next thing that I showed you is this campaign. This is the drive traffic campaign. This is where you're creating your emails and other social, social touches to push traffic. And here's where you're siphoning leads in the capture lead campaign, all right? So I've walked you through, from the perspective of this model, I've walked you through a simple example now of how you can start to think about this process, picking your content, setting up your drive traffic campaign, creating a landing page um, that gives folks the ability to engage with you uh, to turn that into actionable uh, information for you or for your sales team. Does that make sense, everyone? Now, just to remind you, to orient you to the words that MindFire uses, anytime you're thinking about... Um, pushing traffic to something, driving traffic to a blog post, to a webinar, to a website. Think of that in terms of the drive traffic campaign blueprint type, okay? 
Inside of DaVinci, if you've logged in, you know, when you go to create a campaign, we ask you, what's your marketing objective? What are you trying to do? And you tell it, I want to drive traffic. And then it creates for you a workflow that helps you do this, right? Similarly, if you go in and you say, hey, I want to capture leads, then you use the can capture lead campaign objective and it helps you set up this, okay? The other part that I showed you is you can let the system basically give you a running start in both those areas. It'll do 90% of the work for you. And then you can go in and finish the rest of it specific to what you think is applicable to your audience, all right? So you can lean on the machine if you want, or you can do it yourself and build it from the ground up. But today I showed you kind of the easy way to get up and running. I'm going to pause for a moment and just see what questions you have about what you're seeing here on the screen about this workflow, okay? Um, so Brian, Anne-Marie, Cammy, uh, Chuck, David, we got three Davids, oh, four if you're counting me, Elsa, Emerson, John, uh, three Johns, four Johns, Cassie, Leon, Paul, Sharon, uh, Sherry, Sophia, Tracy, Leon. Questions, comments? Where do you think you're going to need help here? Um, where do you think you want to talk to us a little bit more in detail? Uh, let us know over here in the chat so that uh, my team uh, can follow up with you on the way that's most meaningful to you. So go over there. Please let, please let us know. I want to see those comments coming in. If you have any questions or comments about what we're doing here, um, drop those in. Because next week, what we're going to do is build on this. It's important that you understand this um, the, the picture here and you follow along. The first thing that we did was we talked about the blue ocean framework, how to position yourself, right? In a way that's going to attract people to you. Once you're doing that, all of the content that you're finding or that you're creating is going to roll up to that blue ocean framework, that triangle that we showed a second ago, um, kind of at the beginning of today's session. And then next week, what I want to show you is how to take what you've learned today and how to actually distribute content in social and in other places, but primarily in social, how to distribute that content in a way that's actually gonna generate leads for you. A lot of you, uh, and for a lot of people out there, uh, you may have written off, for example, LinkedIn because it just doesn't do anything for you. Well, it's not LinkedIn that's the issue, okay? It's how you're using LinkedIn. Um, it's the strategies, it's the tactics that you're using. It's the tools that you might not be leveraging like MindFire here that will help you turn that into an engagement machine for you that's going to be generating leads, okay? So it's very important, week one, week two, now are gonna set us up for week three, um, and then we're gonna be moving on from there. Let me see what questions we have here. Um, I'm interested in learning more about where my tribe hangs out to help drive the traffic. How much trial and error to learn where their eyes are today? John, if you're open to sharing with me um, your tribe, just kind of describe them, I'll try to, give you some thoughts here and now on, on, the, uh, on the training. Um, that's a great question. Uh, David is saying, I've created multiple target lists that I would like to message a little bit more specifically. Can you run multiple distinct emails based on a segment within a simple drive traffic campaign? Yes, absolutely. And you should, that's a great, great strategy. Eileen, we want to do a custom campaign that involves a valuable, fun and engaging giveaway, kind of a raffle. Can we incorporate both a drive traffic and capture lead campaign? Yeah. So Eileen, um, using the MindFire uh, nomenclature that you now know, let me pull this up here on the screen. So you want to create a, a valuable, fun, and engaging giveaway, kind of like a raffle. Okay, so here's what I see in my head. Um, where you're driving, folks, let me see. Can I actually annotate here on the screen? Uh, draw. Yeah, okay, cool. So um, let's get something that's a little brighter here. How do I change colors? I don't actually know how to draw on the screen, but... Scratch this off for a second, okay? Uh, what I see you could do, Eileen, is um, here, instead of like promoting the ebook, this would be where you have your raffle or your giveaway, okay? So I'm gonna scratch that off here. Um, you'll put a form on this page somewhere here, right? And when they submit that form, you're gonna go to a thank you page, and maybe that's where they can be entered into the raffle, enter to win, whatever the case may be. You're gonna send them an email to say, hey, you know, in two days, we're going to be picking the winner, something like that. Okay, so this part of the process is your capture lead. And so you're right about that. Now, to drive traffic there, you're going to create a drive traffic campaign, which will help you do this part here, okay, which is to get folks over to that page. Now, if you can make sense of these scribbles, you're a genius. 
Um, hopefully you followed along with that. I'm going to uh, redo or undo and go back to uh, the naked state here so that it doesn't look so messy. So Eileen, hopefully I clarified that for you. John is saying, hey, say that we have um, uh, companies 50 million to 250 million in size, big enough for an IT department, but not big enough to hire their own uh, specialist, specialists in business intelligence. They haven't created their own data warehouse. Um, you would want to provide, B uh, we want to provide BI as a service. Okay, so John, um, it sounds like your audience, to me at least, first pass, I would go to certainly LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups, um, Quora, Q U O R A, not very good at spelling, um, Reddit, R E D D I T, I'm sure you're familiar with all of these, and Twitter, okay? And I would start to look around in those areas. Uh, just knowing that audience in general, um, they're going to be somewhere there. Stack Overflow, uh, places like Stack Overflow might also be a good place, but I think maybe you want to be more at the management executive level rather than maybe the technical implementation person. I don't know. Stack Overflow is more of the hands-on. Quora might be better for if you're looking for project managers, people who are, you know, oversee analytics or, or BI, that might be a better place to go. So, John, let me know if any of those were helpful. I'm happy to give you more insight there. Um, Eileen is saying yes to the genius, at least in my own mind. Thanks. Yeah, Eileen, no problem. Happy that um, that, that was useful to you. So, um, folks, what other questions do you have? Uh, John saying great feedback. Marketing leaders would also be targets. So, John, um, you know, in an upcoming session, we're going to be uh, going more into LinkedIn. This... Uh, this box right down here. And so LinkedIn would be fantastic, both from an organic perspective, as well as if you're interested in doing paid um, promotion on LinkedIn. Have you ever run LinkedIn ads, John? If you can just let me know there in the chat, drop me a yes or a no if you've done LinkedIn ads. Um, I'll expand on that if that's useful to you or anybody else. Uh, Jessica, blah, 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 blah. Is, oh, Jessica is saying from John, this is amazing. We'll need help and which buttons to push, et cetera. Yes, that's what IRAM and our fantastic support staff are for. Dave moves fast. Oh, yeah, I move fast, baby. Uh, we'll work through the replay. We have, we've recorded it for you. Practice a bit and be in touch. Yeah, we've got the video here that'll help you. I do move fast. Again, the idea is to give you a taste, maybe is the right word, of the tactics required so that in your head, whether it's you who's launching these campaigns or if you're telling somebody what you want, you kind of have a lay of the land, okay? They can't BS you, for lack of a better word. Don't take that the wrong way, but you'll know now how to kind of instruct them where to go. So, John, I know I move fast, but thank you for that feedback. Uh, John is also saying, this is another John, saying I uh, haven't done LinkedIn ads. Okay, so John, um, if you're interested, um, maybe we can talk more about that or I can uh, weave that into an upcoming session, but LinkedIn ads are not that expensive. Um, I would also try Facebook ads for reaching those targets. Also not expensive. When I say not expensive, just to give you a sense, you know, usually for the MindFire stuff that we do, I'll just share our data because um, I can't necessarily share all of our client data, but usually leads between five to $10 per lead. Is it easy to get that five to $10? No, it's not. You have to know what you're doing, but it's certainly doable. It's certainly possible. So LinkedIn, as an example, would allow you to target exactly the people that you think you should be talking to by title, um, by years of experience, by tools that they use, by groups that they're a part of, really fantastic capacity. So if that turns you on or gives you some new ideas, let me know. Happy to chat um, with you about that. Uh, Tracy is saying, this has given us a great idea for something we want to share via PDF for a new campaign. Tracy, if you're open to sharing, I won't, um, you know, don't divulge anything that you think is your secret sauce, but I'd love to hear what that is so I can tell everybody. That's fantastic. Um, John is saying absolute interest. It's a great suggestion on both Facebook and LinkedIn. One of the things that we're going to talk about uh, in the upcoming uh, classes, John and everybody else, is when you start to heavily lean on social, which we're, we're you know, we can't, uh, I, I just can't emphasize how strongly we believe in this, that once you start to do this and you start to bring people through these types of workflows, you can tap into the machine learning that LinkedIn and Facebook, just two examples, make available to you. And Eileen, if you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, my head's already blown at all this stuff, how am I gonna lean, learn machine learning? Or if others, others of you are thinking that, don't worry, you don't have to learn machine learning. The systems, the integrations that we have with Facebook, with LinkedIn, and the way those things work together allow you to basically say, hey, 
everybody who downloads my ebook, as an example, go find me more people that look like that person and let me put my content in front of them to start to fill my funnel with more of those people. Incredible, incredible capability to do that. So we're gonna to touch on that, okay? That's something that we're gonna learn in an upcoming session. If that's useful to you, let, let us know. Um, David is saying, what are reasonable open rates, clicks, and lead numbers? Uh, you know, we see, we see a variety of things across the board. Um, you know, lead numbers, do you mean conversion rate on the landing page or do you mean like lead costs? Let me start from there and come backwards. Um, like I said, you know, when we're involving social or when we're, we're doing something where there's a paid um, aspect to it, if we can get five to 10 from a mind fire perspective, for some of our customers, they can afford to spend more depending on the lifetime value of what it is you're selling. Some of our customers have to spend less. But for us uh, to get a lead, five to $10 conversion rates, you know, anywhere from 20% to 60, 70% is what we typically see. Um, if you're getting a 10% conversion or a 15% conversion, you may want to see why that is. When I say conversion rate, by the way, what I'm talking about is, uh, let me grab my pen here. I'm talking about the ratio of this to this, okay? So let's say you have 100 people. Ah, I need to get a better stylus. 100 people who land here, and you have uh, 25 who uh, land here. Now you're all smarty pants, I know. Um, so forgive me if this seems too basic, but just in case, that is a 25% conversion rate, okay? So when I say if you're somewhere around 10, again, there's no hard and fast rule. I'm just telling you what we generally look for. If you're somewhere around 10, um, I, I would suggest there's something that you should be doing with your landing page that you need to improve to get up to 25%, 20, 25%, 50, 60, 70%, certainly possible, sometimes even higher. In the case of the raffle um, idea, you know, if you're giving away something good, sometimes we give away $5 gift cards, $20 gift cards, $15 Amazon gift certificates. You can get close to 100% conversion. It's not impossible. Um, so that's uh, kind of my guidance there. In terms of open rates, uh, you know, I'd, I'd ask my team to kind of give me a, a mean. Um, I don't know, Kushal, if you're still here, what kind of the, what's the mean, the average, if you will, uh, open rate that we see? I know that for us, it varies. It can be anywhere from, 25 to 50%, depending on what we're doing, or even higher. Uh, let's see. Tracy saying, our next large buying season is a holiday. So is, is holiday. So this will be a good opportunity for us to put an inspirational PDF available to have people sign up to receive. Yeah, Tracy, absolutely. That's really cool. That's really cool. Now, I know I'm at the end of our time here from the one-hour perspective, but I don't want to rush you. I want to give you time to digest this and ask your questions. If you have to leave, um, go for it. Um, I'd like for you to stick around another few minutes, but let me just uh, clear this off the screen here. Uh, let's see, clear, there we go. Clear all my drawings. Um, and I just want to make sure you know what to do from here, okay? I see I'm a little bit over on time. Um, you got to be involved in the private LinkedIn group. That's where I want to have these conversations with you. That's where I want to give you the help that you need. So Jessica or Iram, if you don't mind, grab that link to the private group and put that in the chat for everybody to be able to access. Hopefully everybody's in there, but if not, um, IRM or Jess will put that in the chat for you. Okay, go request access to that. Secondly, IRM, I think, or, or Jessica are gonna send an email later today with the link to the classroom. This is where we centralize all the stuff for session one, as well as now this new stuff for session two. Go grab the slides, get the video, things like that. That's where we centralize all of that information, okay? So that's, um, that's what you need to know if, you're, if you need to drop off. But I'm going to hang a few more minutes until there's no other questions. Uh, let's see. David is saying he was asking about conversions. Yeah, so David, let me know if I answered your question. Um, I gave you some insight there. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, uh, Kushal, who uh, leads product for us, um, says, I think you're talking about open rates here, Kushal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that we see 10% um, up to 40 to 50% uh, open rates depending on the content. So yeah, uh, not too far off there. Uh, Jessica just gave everybody the link to the private Facebook, I'm sorry, private LinkedIn group. Uh, get my social networks mixed up there. Make sure to go join folks. I want to see you there and I want to be able to help you and support you and encourage you in this journey. So make sure to go over there. Uh, let's wait another couple of minutes. I got a question for you as you're thinking about whether you have any other questions for me. 
of all the things that we covered today, what was the one kind of major takeaway for you? What was that one idea, that one thing that we talked about today that kind of turned on that light bulb for you or gave you that spark of inspiration? Go over to the chat and drop that in for me. Um, if any of you were in the, was that? Yeah, that was earlier today. We did a, a webinar with GPA. Uh, I don't know if you know GPA, big substrate um, vendor. We shared some concepts, uh, some things that's hap that are happening in the industry, ideas, the way print's being used in, in industries across the world, but specifically in North America, that for some people, they said, man, that one idea that you gave us could be the one thing that we need to turn our company around. And so when I ask a question like this, I really want you to think, like, what was the one thing today? It might not turn your company around, just that one thing, but what was that one thing that gave you the inspiration that you need or that gave you the inspiration to reconsider something that maybe you've been thinking about. These ideas, just like the ideas that we shared in the GPA webinar this morning, the ideas that we're talking about here in training today, I firmly believe for some of you are going to spark that opportunity. Uh, David is saying, I missed the call to action on my first campaign. Whoops. Well, the good thing is there's always a next one. You're only one campaign away from, from that killer campaign, David. Keep, keep at it. Uh, Sharon is saying, I'm so bummed I missed it. There was a schedule conflict. All right, Sharon, we can get you that recording. No problem. Uh, John says, linking the value to the campaigns, driving traffic and capturing leads is linked to the blue ocean concept. Value, value, value. Well said, John. Uh, Sharon is saying, I love seeing the magic, in quotes, of Da Vinci. So encouraging. Sharon, what's encouraging about that? I'd love to hear more about that. Um, David is saying, still really good results. Yes. Eileen is saying, the mindset, repeated from last week, but it's so important. We're having a cultural shift here, and it's all geared towards mindset. Awesome. You know, um, Eileen, sometimes, and I'm being vulnerable and honest with you, sometimes when I teach that part of the material, I still am a little um, self-conscious because some, sometimes I feel like people might be thinking it's kind of new agey and weird and stuff, but it's not. It's so imperative that um, we change, you know, what's between these two ears because that's what influences everything else. And my hope is to be able to give you new brain connections up here that are going to help turn your company around, help you generate more sales, create more leads and lead a better life. So thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, John is saying the light bulb continues to be how all of this can be automated and therefore very scalable. Beautiful. Eileen would like the GPA event recordings. Absolutely. Uh, Sharon is saying the speed of setting up the campaigns that it was all done for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, big kudos to Kushal Dutta and our engineering team and product team. Uh, you know, we're constantly negotiating how to make things easier and easier for you. So it's good to hear that. And I know they're going to appreciate hearing that feedback. Uh, Brian, you want to see the GPA presentation from today? Yes. So uh, Jess, I don't know if it's going to be you or Iram who follows up on all of the requests in here, but maybe you can, or maybe we'll post it. You know, what we'll do, we'll post it in the uh, LinkedIn group. Jess, if you don't mind, once that recording is available, if you can take the action, let's post it in the LinkedIn group so that everybody has access to it. All right, Eileen is saying, bravo to the team. We're feeling the love 24 seven. Awesome, cool. Well, I'm gonna wait another minute or two here, folks. Um, I wanna be very respectful of your time. This is also the third time I've been live today, so I need to drink a little water and uh, eat some food here in a second. Iram is saying, thank you to everybody. Yep, Brian, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, Thank you, folks. Really appreciate you. Um, and again, I really want to encourage you, uh, take that link that uh, Jess shared to the group, go over there and post in the group. Um, some of you, I know, are going to have trouble with some of the upcoming lessons because we're talking about posting on social. And I know because I've done this enough that there are some of you who are hesitant to actually put yourself out there and do a post. I know it can be um, nerve wracking so practice with your family here. Go into the LinkedIn group. Just do a post. Say, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm from such-and-such, -and, -such, and I'm hoping to learn X, Y, Z. Introduce yourself. Or if you need something, tell the group what you need, all right? Use that in a small, controlled environment. Uh, challenge yourself to go post something and introduce yourself to the group. All right. Tracy saying thank you. Anne-Marie saying thank you so much. Awesome, men and women. Well, from everybody here at the MindFire team, um, I, I'm uh, just beyond overjoyed to have this opportunity to be with you. It's really an honor. I take it very, very seriously. And I hope you got value out of today.
Thank you for attending today, everybody. Uh, IRM and Jessica are a fantastic duo. They're going to be following up. If you have any other questions, you know where to reach us. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great rest of the day and great weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.